Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're doing a listener request uh, episode. Uh, this, of course, was a question submitted by Yvette Wilson. Uh, it said, can you do a Joey Bosa analytics profile? Uh, he won Defensive Rookie Player of the Year. And I also got another question submitted by Blasphemous. HDTV 3M who also said can you do Joey Bosa and yeah let's do Joey Bosa uh, as a analytics sort of look on him uh, he's a very interesting prospect in the fact that there there was so much hate on him from draft but I mean it amazes me uh, how much people just didn't like Joey Bosa at least some people didn't like Joey Bosa uh, because there were so many things pointing towards success with him on paper his film was 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 viscerally great. I mean, it was sort of grandma scouting, which is a term that uh, one of my uh, colleagues, Bill Carroll, always says is uh, you know he's the type of prospect that if your grandma saw them, uh, or anybody who just didn't know anything about football ever, or at least was very sort of ran like if you just took a random person off the street and showed them a, a video of Joey Bosa, they would go, oh wow, he's a pretty good player. Uh, so regardless of how good uh, a evaluator they are, uh, even though there probably are some really good grandma scouters. So, you know, not to take away from the grandmas, there's probably some really great uh, uh, grandmothers that watch a lot of football, know a lot of football. Uh, but, yeah, Joey Bus is just one of those guys that based on his data coming out, everything was pointing towards success. There was a lot of, as most draft processes, there was a lot of uh, cut through the BS type of stuff with him. Uh, but the bottom line is, is he had a very good profile uh, in terms of data. And it's not surprising that he came out of, uh, of uh, you know, with, with basically rookie of the year, or at least defensive rookie of the year sort of honors, uh, because he is a tremendous defensive player. Um, so, but the bottom line is, Let's get to his analytics profile. For those that aren't very familiar with the terms I'm going to be talking about, um, defensive market share production is where you take an individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total statistic. Uh, so, for example, if a defensive end slash 3-4 outside linebacker had 10 tackles for loss on a team that had 100 tackles for loss, then he had 10% tackle for loss market share. But what you, what you do with that number, though, is you compare it to every single edge rusher since the 1989 NFL draft class, and then you're able to determine, okay, this is how well he did, this is how well the all-pro players did, this is how well the Pro Bowl players did, and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, starters, I don't really add a starter threshold because starters come in like all shapes and sizes at the edge rusher position, at least when it comes to long-term starters. Um, uh, and of course, we're gonna look at uh, athleticism data uh, we're going to look at the explosive lower body strength score the speed score and the flexibility score explosive lower body strength is the vertical and broad jump measured against mass density if you're familiar with force players it's very similar to that in fact it pretty much takes the same influences from that uh, of course and the speed score is a 40 yard dash measured against mass density uh, and the flexibility score is a short shell slash three cone measured against mass density and the last thing we're going to look at when it comes to athleticism is the three cone check. Uh, the edge rusher position is one of those positions where I usually do a three cone check uh, because there is a very clear delineation between Pro Bowl and All Pro players based on their three cones. And I like to at least have that checked out the box because you you could have a guy who tests really flexible for his size. Like essentially you might have a guy who puts up a really good flexibility score for his size, but the functionality of that size, of that, you know, like 
like sure if you have a running back that's 250 pounds it's amazing for him to run really fast to run like a four six but is that functionally good on a football field like does that functionally work and that's where a lot of the three count kind of comes into things is the functionality of that flexibility uh to a certain extent uh, so with all that stuff out of the way let's get to joey bosa in terms of what his production looked like at the college level what his athleticism looked like and then of course we're going to take a quick look at what his rookie season looked like and some of the positives and some of the negatives, you know, um, there's not that many negatives, but just a couple sort of things to improve upon in the future. And with all that out of the way, let's get to Joey Bosa. So starting out Joey Bosa with his uh, production data, he had an 86.81 solo tackle mark share production score. Uh, based on my data that hits every single threshold imaginable for all pro player, uh, hits the 80 percentile threshold, which is the lower end threshold. Every single all pro player had at least eight. 80 or higher solid tackle market share um, and of course pro bowlers were 55 or higher uh, sack market share is the only area where Joey Bosa kind of faltered a little bit not a lot uh, he had an 80.50 sack market share score uh, every single multiple all pro pass rusher uh, since 1989 had at least an 84.67 uh, sack market share production score keep in mind though that that will probably change because of guys like Khalil Mack and of course guys like Bosa you know if Bosa goes on to have multiple all pro seasons then it might be a sign that the sack market share is becoming a little devalued now um, for whatever reason because of different sort of things but the bottom line is is I wouldn't say that Joey Bosa had terrible sack market share he hit at least the pro bowl threshold uh, which is 61.84, which is the low low end of that. Um, and he's also fairly close to the all-pro threshold. So I wouldn't necessarily say he doesn't have all-pro potential 100% uh, based on not hitting the sack market share score. It's just that, you know, he is less likely compared to... He's like in kind of a limbo sort of status, I guess, when it comes to his sack market share. But of course, his tackle for loss market share is 87.73 out of 100 which again hits every single thing that you want uh, when it comes to edge rusher uh, in terms of all pro potential and pro bowl potential. So the only real thing that was off about him a little bit was his sack market share. That was it. Uh, everything else pretty much passed the threshold for uh, you know all pro, and every single thing that he passed was pro bowl threshold. So he pretty much had pro bowl production across the board uh, in, in, with uh, his production. Then when it comes to his athleticism. It is 63.94 explosive lower body strength score, a 71.03 uh, speed score, and a 96.23 flexibility score. The only issue that he had, again, was he had a 71.03 speed score when the threshold, the bottom and threshold for off row is 71.18 in terms of speed score. But again, a 7.03 compared to a 7.18 it's within the margin of error. You know, like it, it, it shouldn't be we shouldn't just go he doesn't have all pro potential now just because he missed it by point fifteen points you know um, so I would I would give him the nudge that he has all pro speed at least you know pretty much could establish a new sort of standard for that in terms of the low end threshold for that and of course he killed it in terms of flexibility he pretty much has elite flexibility for his size uh, and pretty much hits every sing single threshold you want in terms of a pro bowler and starter. Um, and then we get to his three cone. Again, the three cone check. 100% uh, of multiple all pro edge rushers since the 1999 NFL draft class had at least a 7, 11, three cone or less. Joey Bosa has a 6.89 three cone, um, which is even more amazing considering just how big he is. You know, this Joey Bosa is this huge, you know, 6'5. Um, very thickly built guy and he has an amazing three count um, so and of course the Pro Bowl threshold is 7.37 out of 100 um, I mean, again that's 7.37 or less is the three count for Pro Bowl potential sort of players um, but the bottom line is, is Joey Bosa pretty much hits every single threshold that you want uh, when it comes to a very highly uh, sort of uh, you know like a high end sort of player I mean I would as a data person, if I looked at the data on Joey Bosa, 
And you look at his production, you look at his uh, athleticism, I would easily say that he had all-pro potential um, coming out of college. He had pro bowl to all-pro potential. Pro bowl potential being the most likely case, with all-pro potential being like the highest sort of potential upside uh, based on the data because his speed score was, in the, was within the margin of error and his sack market share was also a little bit within the margin of error, but it wasn't so bad. Like a sack market share wasn't so bad that it's just you can't you can't do anything with it is all I'm trying to say. Uh, but the bottom line is, is Joey Bosa pretty much hit every single threat you're looking for in terms of high-end edge rushers uh, at the NFL level. Then you get to his actual NFL production. Um, and in terms of his NFL production, uh, he had a very good solo tackle market share score of 81.80 out of 100. Uh, his sack market share score, which is probably one of the more amazing things, is a 97.29 out of 100. And his pass flex market share was a 27.61 out of 100. His pass flex market share is the only thing that lowers his total impact score. Total impact takes into account solo tackle, sack, and pass flex market share. And I say total impact because... Solo tackles equal dead plays, sacks equal dead plays, and pass deflections equal dead plays. You know, if you cause a pass deflection, the book the plays over. If you cause a sack, the plays over. If you call, if you cause a solo tackle, uh, if you tackle somebody solo, that ends the play. Uh, so Bosa didn't quite have very good pass deflection mark share, but he did have amazing sack mark share and really good solo tackle mark share as a rookie. And when you actually look at what his total impact was as a 21-year-old, based on his sack market share, he's in pretty dang good company. Uh, this is edge rushers between the ages of 22, well, 21 to 22 years old, uh, based on their sack market share. And as you can clearly see, uh, Joey Bosa is pretty much within the area of all those guys in terms of really, really great. Uh, NFL players in terms of his uh, his uh, solo tackle market share and his sack market share, uh, you know, uh, it's very good. It's within the sort of good the good range, if you will, in terms of his age. So I think there's a lot of potential for him to be a very very impactful player in the future based on his age and what he was able to accomplish in terms of his um, sacks and all those other sort of factors. So. He, even though he doesn't have great pass flexion mark share, I think there's a lot of things pointing to uh, that number improving. You know, like I'm honestly thinking about just discontinuing the pass flexion mark share score as much as I do like it because it gives you a full view of how many dead plays they created. I do think that, you know, people put a lot of stock into sacks, people put a lot of stock into solo tackles, you know, like the, the practicality of it is a little bit higher on the sack mark chair and solo tackle mark chair when it comes to um, goodness of fit but i still do like pass flex mark chair but um, but either way you know he had a very good season relative you know to to a guy his age so um, he's a very young pass rusher again he was 21 years old last year he's gonna be 22 this year um, and he had a extremely high sack mark chair score which is pretty much compared to to the last players his age is amazing you know he's in very good company when it comes to his uh sack market share so in conclusion uh when it comes to joey bosa what should be clear based on his data is that he pretty much had pro bowl to all pro potential based on his data um you know he, everything was within at least a reasonable margin of error uh he pretty much had all pro athleticism traits for the most part uh, and he pretty much also had all pro production, especially since if Khalil Mack goes on to have multiple all pro considerations in his career, at least five, because that's what that standard is, uh, then he would be within that era as well in terms of sack market share. So at the college level. Um, so the bottom line is, is Joey Bose pretty much hit every single thing you're looking for when it comes to his production, when it comes to his athleticism. Uh, and on top of that, uh, his NFL career looks to be off to a very good shot, uh, you know, a very good start as well. So um, I would say Joey Bosa, based on his data, should have clearly been a top five selection he, as he was. And I don't think it should be surprising now uh, why the Chargers invested all that they did in him because he pretty much has everything that you want 
uh, when it comes to a pass rusher uh, in terms of uh, all the sort of positive indicators that you're that you're looking for he hits all those sort of marks uh, so again uh, my name is James Coburn you can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com you can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe share this video as well with anybody that you know and I'll talk to you guys in the next video peace